What up, big babies? I was fixing my sink. That was awkward as hell. You you said it would be funny. You're ignorant, you know, it's, it's fine. What up, big babies? It's me, 16 Leo, with my home chick, Fluffster. Uh, like, I, 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 I wouldn't want to quite though. It is the start of July, and I have already seen the worst movie in 2020. It's 365 days. It's a Netflix movie, and it and is, it is crap. crap. 365 days is a Polish-Italian film that has took the world seemingly by storm, especially in North America. It's kind of like the European version of Fifty Shades of Grey, and it has absolutely zero plot. If you haven't already, subscribe, become a big baby. Also, while you're at it, if you want to, please do follow me at 16leo underscore on Instagram. Whenever I post a video, the first thing I do is put a story up on Instagram and that's how people know. I usually add everyone's story to mine. It's always fun. So do follow me there if you want to. Let's get started. 365 days essentially is in the vein of Fifty Shades of Grey or even before that, Twilight. The film pandas to the female demographic so, so f***ing much. And I wanted to show you just how much it pandas to them. So I, I made a game. I was gonna write it down. But then I thought, well, I'm just gonna say it. Why don't I do this? This is a water bottle. What I'm gonna do is fill it. Every time some thirsty ass is said, I will drink that water. And I will explain why they're pandering to the female demographic. By the end of this video, I'm gonna have such good skin and I'm also gonna need to pee. So the two main characters are called Massimo and Laura. From what Netflix says, the plot is, a woman falls victim to a dominant mafia boss who imprisons her and gives her one year to fall in love with him. I watched the movie from start to finish and still, I don't know what the main character does. If you took Al Pacino out of Scarface and replaced him with Tommy Wiseau, you'd probably get 365 days. So the movie opens up on an island. I'm already, I already hate this film. Ci sono circa 20 rifugiati. Solo ragazzine. Io temo che voi avete sbagliato indirizzo. Ma il merce è buono. Un affare. Alcune appena dodicenni. La mia famiglia non ha mai fatto questo tipo di affari. I don't know if you can see the father. He's like pretty concerned. He's like, whoa. Excuse me, guys. Ah, my family has never done this. Then why, why do you arrange the meeting? This is how the movie starts. This mafia boss doesn't know what he's doing. We are also introduced to Mario, who uh, I'm just gonna assume is this guy's uncle. And Mario doesn't really say much, but he always looks really disappointed. Prenderti le tue responsabilità. Per un giorno, che tutto questo sarà tuo. Definitely the guy is still in the air. He he didn't leave. He nobody's gonna try and fire back at the helicopter. He could still shoot. Mario, I'm trying to save you. you. When you're playing Apex and someone's reviving you, and there's clearly there's other people. It's like thick now you're just gonna wake me up to get shot down again, Mario. Please just drag me to cover. We don't see how he recovers. We don't see any of the impacts this scene has on the rest of the movie. So it's devoid of everything. But it gets better. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Leo, is that Enrique Iglesias? And I'm like, no, no, no. And you're like, is that Gabriel Iglesias? I'm like, no, 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 no. It's Massimo! But he's also a single, believe it or not. They got two for the price of one. You remember Attaway General, how Jack couldn't dance or sing? This is a guy who can't act or sing. That's a, They're breeding. It's all of the tonality of Enrique Iglesias, minus the vocal ability, it's mwah. Michelle, can you sing? No. Here, I just play a piano. He's like, but I want you to know, and I won't let you go. Fuck it, let's move it. Put it in the movie. Good evening. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Please, could anyone tell me what the hell happened here yesterday? My question is, how the fuck did it happen? Hmm? 
<laughs> the person who financed this film, they put him in the movie. That was his reaction. He looked at it and he's like, my question is, how the fuck did it happen? This is America. You have this game in America. Sexual preference. Should I continue? So we're introduced to the main character, Massimo. And one of the things that I always like to point out is costume design. They always dress him up in a suit and tie. And that is supposed to appeal to the female demographic because you will later see her current boyfriend and his outfit. But I'm gonna drink to this. Bottoms up. So the opening scene also establishes Laura. And I think she's a businesswoman, but I don't know what she does. This is the introduction to Laura's boyfriend, Martin. He was just doing work at home, probably after a long, long day. She comes home, she's like, hey, I want to sex you, bro. <laughs> and then he was like, Laura. Your heart is weak. I don't want to do it. I thought initially, I thought he was just like dissing her. Turns out, apparently in this movie, she actually has a heart condition. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody explains it. It doesn't at all impact the film. Again, the writing of this movie is top tier. This shot is basically the, oh, I'm coming home to my dead ass beat boyfriend. He doesn't have a six pack. He doesn't have abs. He doesn't treat me right. He doesn't show me the attention I deserve because he's too busy working. When they write those shitty books, that's what they do. Not only do they make the bad boy seem so good, they also make the current boyfriend you would so bad that it's like, why did you date him in the first place? If he was so trash, what did you see in him? Lachaim. I don't know how I'm gonna finish the bottle. The next scene we have Laura turns 29. Un momento, un momento, un momento. Oggi è il compleanno. As you can see, once again, the damn clothing gets me. This dude, he's wearing military cargo shorts. I feel like 12 year olds are the only people who still wear that. And a singlet to her birth, her 29 birthday, where they're out in a fancy restaurant. <coughs> Oggi è il Compleanno della mia ragazza Laura. He had to read that. Today is the beautiful birthday of my girlfriend, Laura. He had a bit too much to drink. So Martin basically sings happy birthday and Laura calls him a dumbass in front of everyone. And as she goes to get a drink, guess what happens? Just guess. I'm not gonna give you time to guess. Massimo appears out of nowhere. This movie is also an Italian science fiction movie. Are you lost, baby girl? Are you lost, baby girl? Who are you appealing to? Five-year-olds? Actual baby girl? Like little, like Rosalina? Martin is a sort of round, robust, rotund man, bald. You know, he's a bit of a goofball. Next thing you know, you have a literal fucking disappearing and appearing silhouette of a man wearing a sleek black suit. He's got a nice beard. He's like, are you lost, baby girl? He's This movie is basically the fantasy away from your boyfriend movie. <laughs> What happens is Martin actually leaves her to go on a trip and he says it's because of her weak heart and she gets annoyed at him and she wanders off on her own <laughs> and she gets kidnapped. Yep. Are you lost, baby girl? Are you lost, baby girl? The baby girl part is just the most... <laughs> Who is hearing this and being like, oh shit? Suck it. I didn't know you have a heart problem. <laughs> Why am I here? What I'm about to tell you is so incredible that I, I wouldn't have believed it's true until I saw you at the airport. That is how you know the story is going to get amazing. Even the actor is like, what I'm about to tell you is so crazy. Even I don't believe it. I actually read the script five times. I even argued with the screenwriter. I said, this is stupid. And he was like, no, say it. So I say it. Now they don't give me roles anymore in Hollywood. And I say to them, what accent is this? Is it French? No. In that moment, I understood. What the f 
acting is this? Five years ago, my whole life has changed. My father died. The bullet went through his heart and hit me. My heart stopped, I saw you. Every day I had this image in front of my eyes. I was looking for you around the world. But that's why I'm giving you a chance to fall in love with me. Not because I made you do it, because you will want to. You must be kidding. That's the whole plot of this film. His father got shot, he got shot. When he was dying, he envisioned a girl. Because he imagined her, he somehow saw her at the airport. He kidnapped her and he's given her 365 days to fall in love with him. This man is so good. He is so good at the power of manifesting things that they actually appear. Bro, why didn't you manifest your father back to life? What the hell is wrong with you? You, you literally made a girl appear out of thin air. This might be Tony Robbins' life story. I was looking for a girl and I found her. I'm Tony Robbins and if you smile, yeah, things will come true. Thing is, if she doesn't fall in love with him, she can leave. I don't know why they want me to root for this guy, but I'm rooting for the girl to leave. But I've got a boyfriend who's going to look for me. I've got family, friends. Your boyfriend doesn't deserve you. My people have taken your stuff from the room. Important plot development. Martin apparently has been cheating on Laura because if he hadn't been cheating, and she just left him after being a faithful boyfriend, that would cause some internal conflict. And that would mean she's more than a one dimensional character. But hey, we're not doing that. This is a get out of jail free card, essentially. This man loves her. He searched the world for her. He's got all the money, everything. But not only that, her ugly fat boyfriend is also a cheater. <laughs> we're about halfway done. Uh, I'm not feeling great. To me, this movie essentially disrespects the whole female demographic, that they don't take them seriously enough to give them a movie with insight and a little bit of conflict and a climax and a resolution. They don't do that. They just give them exactly what they want and then dip. I don't think that challenges the viewer. We're ready in two hours because we need to buy some stuff before we depart. Depart? Where to? What are you talking about? I'm not flying anywhere unless it's Poland. It wasn't an offer. It was an order. It will be a good year. He will accompany me. Massimo takes Laura on a trip with him to do some gangster work. I don't know if you've noticed, he hasn't done one ounce of work yet. He just had a dream and kidnapped a girl. This is like Martin Luther King Jr. If he went rabid, that's what he's like, I have a dream. And then he just stole someone and ran away. People be like, whoa, might as well talk about the character of Laura while I still can. She's detestable as a person. She has no redeeming qualities. I don't know what her job is. I don't know what her intentions are. I don't know what her goals are. She she seems to get kidnapped, she leads Massimo on, then she gets annoyed when he tries to do anything. The first thing they do is go on like a trip where she shops and she just buys thousands of things. She doesn't seem to care that she's kidnapped. It's pandering again, basically where you could do endless shopping and your man just sits there or he gets you things. Two things, I need to pee already. And two, Lachaim again, to a montage of shopping in a gangster erotic movie. Get out. Get out or else, else I- Else what? I guarantee you this is the last time you see it. See it on yourself. Please, I need help. Can you help me? Buongiorno, signore. Can either make it hard for both of us for the next year or take part in an adventure that faith has given you. So then in the middle of this montage, Lara remembers, oh yeah, whoops, I'm a kidnappy. I forgot about that. So she goes to two police officers and then Massimo turns up and they're like, whoa, he owns everyone and everything with the job that he does. What does he do? Pierogi. Is it good? My grandma makes them better. My Look at this motherfucker, you got shell shock. This man kidnapped you and you're dissing me. This is the scene in which Massimo describes what he does. So what do you actually do? Business. 
I have few companies, hotels, clubs, restaurants. It's, it's like a corporation and I'm the CEO. The whole is part of a bigger operation. The details are useless and dangerous. He's like a part of a big corporation. He's a CEO, but it's part of a bigger corporation. But the detail, they're useless, but it's dangerous. But did someone's dog write this? We just put his paws on the thing and started slamming. And then as he slammed, they were like, wow, that's sort of coherent. They didn't even need to give him a job. He's like, I do dangerous business. I own all the club, everything. The fact is you'd be working. Even Pablo had a damn job. Why are you looking at it? Do you want to touch it? I don't understand what the point of the 365 days is because they don't bring up how many days have elapsed. There's nothing hinging on the balance of this. There's nothing for her to lose. She leaves scot-free. Whenever you write a movie, you want the main character to have an arc, face a problem, an obstacle, and overcome it. There's nothing. This guy's already got everything. His goal is to get the girl to love him, but there's no obstacle stopping them from falling in love. There's lots of butt and boops. Another Massimo banger. Massimo featuring Squirrelox, because this is like the brand dollar store version of everything. Let me out. Open the door. Sit on the bed. So once again, for pandering purposes, this is the dominatrix man. There she is, tied up to the bed, watching this man seduce her. Everybody wants that in life. <sighs> Am I being too hard on this movie? I, pun not intended. <laughs> <laughs> It's the water that's doing it. They then go to a club that Massimo owns to do business. Laura gets left alone because, you know, rule one of kidnapping, give your victim some space. And she uses the space to seduce another man, to get Massimo's attention. This chain of events makes Massimo so angry that he pulls out two gats in the club. There's only one person harassing her, so the other gat is focused on just some innocent people. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I was just sitting down. I don't know why you think that I'm part of this. She came and started using the pole. I'm, I've been here with my girlfriend of nine years. I don't know why you're holding your weapon at me, sir. I thought this was a family-friendly club. I don't know if this was to make him look like a, a protector. So he's like, I will never let anyone hurt you. Besides me. There's a little swig for that one. I was just kidding. He actually did murder that guy. They then have a fight and go on to the top of the boat and my favorite scene in the movie happens. I'm sorry, I didn't think. Uh... Yeah, you didn't think. You killed him. I shot his head. I wouldn't have to do it if you didn't dress like a whore and put on your little show. Leave me alone. What are you doing? Again. Again. That is a 10. I'm surprised she didn't do a double backflip somersault into the water. Jesus, what a dive, lady. I'm so grateful that you're alive. I can't lose you. I don't want to. You have to rest. After she gets thrown off a boat, <laughs> 
Massimo saves her because when things happen, her heart gets so weak and she just sleeps. Once she wakes up after her baby nap, he shows his vulnerable side. He just leaves. He's like, I can't lose you. Okay, bye. And then she holds his hand and she's like, this is it. That's all you need to say. Spread him, baby. And then she starts sucking him fucking baby. Pronto. Anyway, uh, Italian Shia LaBeouf is like, pronto. 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 <laughs> we forgot to work for a month. So he leaves her and he's like, can you go back to Warsaw? Just chill with your friends. We'll catch up with you later. So then she meets up with her best friend from the start of the movie that I don't think was in the start of the movie. Anyway. Już myślałam, że cię porwali. Co się wydarzyło na tej pierdolnej Sycylii? Zakochałam się. Ty ją muszę wydusić to z ciebie. Mów, kto to jest, no. And they start talking about him. Once again, pandering to the female demographic by having the female best friend character who agrees and supports you. We're almost done with a bottle at the end. If I could point you out to a great supporting character, it would be the friend in Get Out. Throughout the movie, Jordan Peele sets him up as the one character with too much sensibility. So much so, he is the one who makes the save at the end of the film. And that is a great way to portray a supporting character. But this girl was not really introduced. So she's just randomly coming in for no reason. Wyobraź sobie silnego samca, który zawsze wie czego chce. Do tego jest twoim opiekunem i obrońcą, przy którym zawsze czujesz się jako mała dziewczynka. Jest spełnieniem twoich wszystkich seksualnych fantazji. A żeby było mało, to ma metr dziewięćdziesiąt. Zero tkanki tłuszczowej jest wyrzeźbiony przez samego boka. She explains his characteristics. She basically read how the character was written and explained that. That is the most abundantly clear pandering I think I've ever seen in my life. She, she said alpha male. She said an archetype. In the breakfast club, you're not like, I'm the nerd, busting. Another montage. But this time it's the best friend montage. Cause we have time for this shit, apparently. To another great scene, unnecessary to the plot and has no bearing on the final result of the movie. Laura is back at a club. Somehow, Martine sees her. Laura? He just walks in like she just wasn't missing. Trust you. He's, he's just like, Laura? This dude has obviously changed. He's had a character arc. He's wearing a shirt under his singlet now. That's so much more of an improvement. Możemy pogadać? Ci nie mam nic do powiedzenia. Błagam cię, Laura, daj mi chociaż wyjaśnić, a potem... Przespał się z inną dupą, tak? Ale Laura, tak. To wszystko prawda, tak było. Ale ja przez ten czas zrozumiałem, że naprawdę... Naprawdę cię kocham. This movie almost, almost had a plot line that might have worked. He didn't even say that's not true. He's like, it is true. I still love you. And instead of her being like, oh, damn, I've been with you for 10 years. Instead of saying that, she's like, I'm going to puke. <laughs> Well, I don't understand what you two are saying. Laura and Martin fight. Clearly, the chair is empty, but the next shot, Massimo appears there. Proving my theory that this movie is just one big derivative of Twilight turning into Fifty Shades of Grey turning into Polish Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I couldn't even get through that line. Martin, chodź, chodź, proszę. No chodź do środka. Naprawdę jesteś pijana. Jesteśmy w kontakcie. That's one of the coldest things I ever seen. Martin just sees Massimo and he's like, "Damn, this who you fucking?" Ah, uh, I'll see you later, bro. I don't. All right, peace. I don't, I don't know their relationship. I don't know the weight of the situation. And I guess that's not important. Leaving your man for a better man. Once again, <laughs> a staple. Massimo and Laura then engage in, uh, in sex. This is the moment when she really falls in love with him. You know why? What's this? Nothing. I don't need the real. She rips open Massimo's shirt and she realizes, oh my God, he's been shot again. Apparently, 
in the time that he was gone to do his activities, Massimo got shot and managed to heal up in that couple of days that he was gone. <laughs> so not only does he appear and disappear, he actually has regeneration abilities. What a, what a man. He's like, oh, I don't need 365 days. I love you today. And that's how the movie should have ended. But unfortunately, it's still fucking going. Will you marry me? Yes. This movie appeals to every fantasy, every fantasy trope that a woman has ever had. And again, once again, I don't mean a normal thinking person. I just mean they just thought like, what do women like? Oh, tell me, tell me, Linda, what do women like? Oh, they like marriage? Okay, write that down, write that down. Oh, sorry? Story? <laughs> well, toy Story, maybe. Bitch, we're making a movie. Now they go on another montage. She finally found the perfect man and she wiped him up. I'm almost, this is, I haven't poured one drop down. I don't know if it's healthy for a person to drink this much water in this short amount of time. Everything will be fine. I'm gone. But since she's getting married, Lara then invites Massimo to a wedding. So now Massimo meets the parents. He already looks like he doesn't want to be there. Everything will be fine. Listen, Massimo, one thing I don't want you to tell my parents is uh, what you do for a living. Because then they might actually know. And then I might know. Don't tell them exactly what you do. Laura. My mom is asking, what do you do for a living? I'm a gangster. Oh, he's a gangster. And he didn't lie at all. <laughs> really? That is my favorite reaction of all time, I think. <laughs> really? Uh, she had a wedding where there was only one female guest and she threw the bouquet straight to her. I'm gonna drink to another bullshit trope. Catching the flowers and then being the next one to get married. <sighs> Unfortunately, kids, we've come to the end of this movie. So, without further ado, the twist ending. <laughs> Lara confesses to her friend that she's pregnant. You know what this is for? This last bit? It's for trying on the most extra wedding dress I've ever seen in my life, as well as also being pregnant by the guy who's a gangster, makes infinite money, is possibly a vampire, um, has actually killed for you, taken a bullet, and survived, as well as made your ex-boyfriend look like Diglett from Pokemon. This movie is so thirsty. Laura calls Massimo to say she misses him and he misses her back. Great. Meanwhile, Mario gets a call, an important one. Massimo. How long does it take to try on a dress? As long as it takes. Che succede? Voglio non uccidere Laura. Hi, honey. Laura? Laura? This is why they should have fired Mario years ago. He just answered the call. He's like, see? Oh, they're about to kill Laura? Okay, bye. The guy on the other end was like, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. I didn't tell you where. I didn't tell you when. I didn't tell you why. Don't you want to know? Mario. That's how they end the movie. They gunned down Laura. They shot the baby's not coming, I guess. The best friend just died. <laughs> Thank God. They don't tell you why. They just manufactured conflict out of nothing. I've seen. I've seen.
pornos with better storylines and I So they got a bad boy as the lead character who always dresses really well. He's tall, handsome. He has a job that's pretty dangerous. So he's kind of a bad boy. But he also has a soft, vulnerable side. He also makes infinite money and can teleport. And also, I think he's invincible. They had the main female protagonist have a deadbeat boyfriend who was pretty ugly. And not only was he ugly, he also cheated on people. So he was a piece of sh**. He only cared about his job. He never put her first. The infinite amount of montages, of shopping montages, and makeover montages, and clubbing montages, and wedding dress montages. <sighs> How much more bullshit can you feed a female audience? 365 days is an erotic, basically fan fiction form that serves no justice to the plot and really honestly takes the audience for dummies. Its mass appeal is for females and it has done very well for some reason. I can't not admit that and I'm, you know, all props to them. Normally when we say movies are bad, we think of movies like The Room, but that movie is so bad, it's good. And the reason it's like that is because Tommy was the, the director, actor, writer, and and everything else probably in that film. He did it out of love. He didn't do it to appeal to a certain demographic. He did it because he was into filmmaking. That somehow still translated. So much so that James Franco eventually picked it up and made The Disaster Artist, which was another great movie. This movie, on the other hand, it had a budget, it had a film company, a director, a writer, some actors, and it was just, just so, so cringy. And I don't say that word often. Pronto! <laughs> That's the movie, guys. I just wanted to say a quick thank you for watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Your support is always valued. You know, if you guys like this, then let me know. This might be a thing as well, because I love watching horrible movies. Until then, take care of yourselves. I shall see you very soon with the next one. And fluff still. This is the ass literally left, right, and center. Like, it's crazy. Oh, shit, that's hot, girl. That's, that's hot.